Welcome back again. Um, so we're going to be picking up where we left off yesterday um, and working with core graphics. Uh, so we've been working on our moving smiles example. Um, the moving smiles, we're going to do some core graphics um, and then later some gesture recognizers. Uh, where you should have been from last time um, is we were making uh, these smile objects we were working on drawing. Uh, we got through the eyes. Uh, we had not yet done the mouth. Uh, so you should have these freaky looking um, little eyes, uh, smiles with eyes. Um, they're a random color uh, that's chosen, um, <clears throat> but there's no mouth, um, so still no mouth. Um, so what we're going to do to start with is we're going to draw a mouth. I uh, probably saw that one coming. So we're working inside the draw rect function. Um, you can see it gets busy in a hurry, you know, so I did, I've got my <coughs> convenience uh, variables, um, I've got my um, transformation matrix, uh, setting it equal to the identity. Um, I'm drawing my outer smile, um, and then here I'm drawing my eyes. Uh, the next thing we're going to start working on is we're going to start working on the mouth. Um, so just kind of just just like we've done before. Um, so there's going to be a couple of steps. Um, we're going to set up things like you know the fill color and whatnot, uh, and then we're going to do the geometry, um, and then we're going to paint this thing. Eventually, we're going to make this really fancy with gradients. Um, but just to kind of check our geometry, let's start off by just just making a nice, simple red mouth, right? Um, so let's just change our UI color, or change our color to be the UI color red color. Um, we can keep it with a simple black outline. Um, the line width we can keep it to. And so you can feel free to say these things again, or you can delete them and they'll stay the same. Doesn't matter, it makes no difference. Uh, what we're gonna choose to do with the mouth um, <coughs> is, um, th there are a couple ways you could do it easier, but I'm, I'm going to show you, I want to show you a lot of good tricks. Um, so what we're going to do um, is we're going to start off, we're going to start um, at this tip of the mouth. Um, we're going to draw a line across here. So we're going to see drawing a line, um, and then we're going to draw an arc across the bottom. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out where is this point here. The way that a context works is it's always got the current point. Um, and so when you add a line, um, you actually just give it um, an X and a Y, and that's a line. Um, and that's because it assumes that it starts from the current point and goes to that new location. Um, so we need to figure out where this point is and where this point is. That's going to be an important thing. Where they're at is their radius of 0.7 um, away um, at angles of negative 15 and negative 165. So let's go make some of this stuff happen. So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, move to a point. You know what, I'm going to copy paste this because it's going to get long enough. <clears throat> it's going to get long enough anyway. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to move to a point. And that point that we're going to move to is um, 0.7 smile radius cosine of negative 165. And then we're going to add a line um, that goes straight across. Um, so we're going to go straight across to negative 15 degrees. Um, and at this point, we could run it. Um, and we should see that, that line show up. So you can see we've got the, the first part of the mouth. Um, and so you can see drawing a line is pretty easy. I say move, um, which doesn't add anything. and just moves that current point. And then I say add line, um, and that's what adds the line. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an arc. Um, uh, this one I should just do live. Um, so to add an arc, there's a couple functions you could use. So we'll say CG context add um, arc. You can see there's an add arc to point, um, and then there's also just an add arc. The one that's easier for our purposes is just add arc. 
you can see it takes a couple of parameters. Um, I chopped mine up just for the purposes of the video. Um, the first one that it expects is it expects um, the context ref, so just context. Uh, the next is the x value of the center of the circle. Um, that works out great because we've got a center x um, and we've got a center y. You'll find that some things in core graphics take points. Um, some take them separately as an x and a y. It um, doesn't matter. You just you look at the prototype and you figure out what, you, what it wants. Uh, the radius is 7 times the smile radius. Feel free to say 0.7 or 0.7f. Um, by putting an F on here, it'll just use a float for 0.7, um, and it's a little faster. Uh, you'll never see the speed difference, but it's a little faster. Uh, the start angle, uh, the way we're going to draw it is, um, I think of it as being from the line came across. So our start angle is negative 15, and we're going to 165. Uh, so negative 15. Um, and as always, convert that to radians. We could make a cute little macro uh, to convert to radians, but it's easy enough. I'll just kind of do it manually each time. Um, some people like macros. Uh, the next question here is clockwise. Um, this is actually uh, a bool, to be perfectly honest. If you hold down Option and double click, you can see that it takes clockwise. And clockwise, it says in here, you probably can't read it, it says specify 1 for clockwise, 0 for counterclockwise. Um, we're going this way, so we're going clockwise. Cool. Um, so if we want clockwise, we want a 1 there. Um, and so right now, if we build and run it, um, it should add that line coming across, um, and then it should also add that arc um, coming across the bottom. If your eyes are tremendously good, um, you will notice the faintest of differences between this corner of the mouth um, and that corner of the mouth. The reason there's a slight difference is this path, if you think about it, it comes across um, and then it turns down. So this spot right here um, is like a corner uh, and then it comes over here and it stops. So this spot over here is actually the ends of two lines coming together. With core graphics, you can set things like whether things come to a minor ends um, or a rounded ends. Um, you can also set the end caps and whether they're, um, well, there's a butt cap or, or what you want to do. The moral of the story is there's a slight difference from one to another. On my screen, the one on the, the, one on the right is a little pointier. If you care about that level of detail, um, one thing you can do to make them the same is you can say CG context. Um, begin path, um, so that'll mark the beginning, um, and then when you're done with the geometry, you can say CG context, uh, close path. And if you are worried about that one minor difference, now they will have the same look, um, so it will be the same on the left and right, because now they're both continuous loops um, in this path. This smile is totally acceptable. Um, we, we've made a smile. Um, it looks like a happy smile. This is totally acceptable. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little fancier. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a gradient on the mouth. Um, the reason for doing this is not because I care about a gradient mouth. The reason is I want to show you gradients. Um, so we're going to change the mouth um, to instead use a gradient. So let's go ahead and start, uh, start working on this gradient. So we've got all our geometry here, um, and then we drew this thing. Um, what I want to do is I want to, um, <clears throat> I want to make a gradient instead of just a solid red color. To make a gradient, um, <clears throat> there's a couple of options that you can use. Um, you can, um, use a linear gradient. Um, so a linear gradient, you know, just goes from one slowly into another. Um, you could also use a radial gradient, so this kind of comes out from the middle of a circle. Um, in addition to gradients, which make things look fancier, there's also a thing called shading. Um, 
We're not going to take time for shading, but I will show you gradients, uh, just because I think gradients make your drawings look really sharp. Uh, the way these two gradient options work, depending on whether you're doing radial or linear, um, is they take different parameters. So we're going to play with this one, draw linear gradient. So CG uh, context, uh, draw linear uh, gradient. Um, and let's just go ahead and do the same game we did before, breaking it up to see what all the different options are. So let's go through them one at a time. The first one, CG context ref, we've got that one down. That's just context. Uh, second one we're going to save for last. Uh, the next one is the start point. Uh, the start point is where do you want the gradient to start. Um, where we want this gradient to start is we're going to go ahead and use the top center of the mouth as the start point, um, and then the bottom center of the mouth at mouth as the end point. Um, so our gradient's going to go from here to there. So let's go ahead and start doing some of that code. Let's go ahead and say CG point uh, start point and CG point uh, end point. Oh, we can do even better. Let's say uh, gradient. Uh, start point and gradient end point. Uh, to make defining this point easier, I'm going to start off by saying that it's equal to center point um, and then I'm just going to move the Y down some. Um, so this, um, <clears throat> the bottom one is easy, uh, so the end point is easy. Um, we're just going to say um, subtract off 0 0.7 times um, the smile radius. For the top, we have to be a little trickier. Um, what we really want is we want the cosine of um, negative 15 degrees. Cosine of negative 15 degrees, or sorry, sine of 15 degrees is a negative value. So I'm just going to say plus because it, it will be a negative. Um, so 0.7 times the smile radius times the sine of negative 15 degrees. I could have also done, you know, minus positive 15 degrees. E either way, you get a negative in there. Um, and so that's going to be my gradient start point. Um, and then this will be my gradient's end point. So far, so good. Next one up is the drawing options. To see more about this, I'm going to hold down Option and double click on uh, Linear Gradient. Um, and I'm going to see what are these options. So I'm going to click on these Gradient Drawing options. Um, and I can see that there are two options. Um, one is, do you want to draw before the start location? Um, or do you want to draw after the end location? Um, <clears throat> for what we're doing, it shouldn't really matter uh, once we get it correct. But personally, I recommend these. Um, and what they do is, if you draw beyond um, start point and end point, um, it'll just make it solid that color before, um, and then solid the end color after. Um, and there's usually no harm. I, I just stick them on. So those were easy. Now let's do the one that's hard. Um, so CG gradient ref. <clears throat> we'll just kind of work our way up here. So a CG uh, gradient ref. Uh, we'll just say my gradient. Um, we don't have to say star because it, it is already a pointer because it's a ref. Um, so in order to make a CG gradient, uh, there is a method called CG gradient create. Um, there are actually two of them. There's a create with colors and a create with color components. Um, I'm more comfortable with the color components one, so we're going to use that. Um, and the main reason I use it is um, I first learned about gradients from Matt Stroker's videos for University of Utah, and it's the one he used, um, so I thought I'd use the same. You can see that it takes four properties, so we went from, from one kind of unknown, um, so we made my gradient, um, to now all of a sudden we have four unknowns, which is great. Uh, these will just handle in order. So the first one we have to make is a color space ref. Um, 
This one, you can always do the same thing. You can just make an RGB color space. Um, let's see here. Um, get, I think it's got the word device in it somewhere. Um, so I think it's device RGB. Uh, I don't remember what it is, so I'm going to have to look and help. I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to start by clicking on this great with making color components. Um, and then from there, I will click on um, oops, uh, color space ref. Um, so let's see here. Uh, better yet, I'll pause the video and I'll go find it. Uh, so I found the one I wanted. Um, I looked in the document CG color space uh, reference, um, and there's a there's a function here called color space device RGB. Um, and so that's the function that we want. Um, so CG color, so I was way off. I was putting a, the word context in there. CG color space uh, create device RGB. Uh, this will return the RGB color space, uh, which is what um, I'll always use with my gradients. Next thing it wants is CG float um, for the colors. So I'll say color components. And then it also wants a CG float um, for the locations. Um, and these are arrays, so I suppose I should put the array symbol in here. Um, and these are just regular old C arrays. Um, so I'm going to de define, declare and define them on the same line. So I'm not going to say the size, I'm just going to define it right here. Um, what these are is these three have to be consistent. So you have to say how many colors you're going to have. Um, so for this example, I'm just going to do two colors. Um, you could do multiple, you could do as many as you want. Um, I'm going to say what are their locations. Um, so I'm going to pass in their locations. And then I'm also going to say what their color components are. If you're only doing two locations, um, you should probably just make those locations be 0 and 1 um, if you want it to, to span the whole range. Really what the locations is all about is let's say you've got like you know three or four colors. Um, so you know if you have multiple colors, you could spread them out evenly um, or you could spread them out in different ways. If you only have two, um, you should you should most commonly just put it on the uh, extremes because you can decide where the extremes are with the start and end points, right? So locations are just zero and one. The way the color components work um, is that we're actually giving it an RGB um, and alpha for each component. So my first color here. Um, I'm going to give it an R of 0.7, a G of 0.7, a B of 0.7, so it's going to make it like a light gray. And then for the next one, um, I just want it to be red. So I'm going to say 100% on the red, no green, no blue, um, and go ahead and keep the alpha um, at 100%. So it's going to transition from a light gray um, to red. So that's where the gradient is going to go. Um, so I finally kind of backed my way up uh, out of this thing, which is great. Um, and then one thing I want you to do is go ahead and click on Build and Analyze, um, and see if there's any um, see if there's any concerns with the Static Analyzer. Ah, I didn't catch them. I'm disappointed. Um, the thing that I was hoping it would catch is just because it's a C API does not mean you don't have to worry about memory management. You still have to worry about memory management. So you can see that this uses the word create. Um, create means that it's dealing with memory management and you are now responsible for this RGB color space. Um, since this one used the word create, that means you're now responsible for my gradient. Um, so I was responsible for these two, um, so I've got to release them. When it comes to releasing things um, in C, um, there is a general release function, um, I think it's called CF release um, or something like that, um, and that's for core foundation release. Um, but if something has its own specific release, so for example, color space um, release, um, um, if a particular thing has its own special release, you should always use it. So there is one for color space, um, and there is also one for gradient. Um, so there's a release for gradient. So we're going to release those things. 
So let's go ahead and build this and let's see what we got. Um, I assure you it is not going to do what you want just yet. Um, if you click right now, um, you can see that, well, it made a gradient, um, so that's good. Um, but it kind of covers the whole darn view. Um, that was not the goal. The goal was that it would show just the mouth, right? Um, so I didn't, I didn't want it to cover the whole darn view. Uh, the reason it covers the whole view is because that's how gradients work. Um, gradients uh, will always fill the whole view. Um, that sounds a little ridiculous. They'll always fill the whole view. That's not what I want. Um, so what you have to do is you have to clip. Um, so you have to use a clipping region. Um, so in order to properly use a gradient, you need to create geometry. Um, and then instead of drawing that geometry, um, you set that geometry to be the clipping plane. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Um, what that looks like is you just say CG context clip. So instead of drawing the mouth, which is what I did here, um, I'm instead going to um, <clears throat> use it as the clip, so the clipping region. So anything after this point is going to can only draw within this clipping region. So this path here is not getting drawn. It is serving as the clipping. So you can see I commented out the draw, um, and I'm going to use it as the clip. If I run it now, my gradient will be limited to only in that geometry. Um, and you can see that now my smile is limited by that clipping region. Cool. So things are going good. Um, we've now got a smile that uses um, a gradient. It's not the best use of gradients ever, but you can definitely see that it's it's doing a gradient, right? Um, and gradients give you a lot of capabilities uh, to make things fancy. Um, <clears throat> next, what we're going to do is let's say that you weren't happy with your gradient because it doesn't have that black outline. So you know how the other ones have a stroke and a fill? Um, gradients, since they use a clipping plane, they don't have the ability to stroke a black outline. So let's say that was really important to you. Obviously for our smiles here it's good enough, so I don't care about our smiles, but I want to show you some more things. Um, and I'm going to say, what if you really wanted that black outline? Well the first thing you could do if you really wanted that black outline is you could um, copy paste, right? So we've got all this geometry that we want to use for the clipping region. Um, and then we're going to use that geometry again um, after all this um, <clears throat> to uh, outline the mouth. So copy paste obviously would work here, um, but I mean that's like a you know cardinal sin in programming to copy paste something. So what we're going to do is this. Um, the way we added the geometry so far is we've added it directly to the context um, and the context is path underneath the hood. Instead of doing that, uh, we're going to create um, a CG path. So we're going to say CG, um, actually we're going to create a mutable path um, and we're just going to call it mouth path. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, um, got to remember my functions here. Uh, that's the beauty of having um, <coughs> notes. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a mutable path. My goodness. So we're going to create a mutable path. Had to say that a billion times. Um, and then we're going to add things to this path. And then by, by adding things to that path, um, then we can reuse that path in various places if we like. So I'm going to cheat. Um, I've done this once before, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. Um, and you'll see that the commands for paths are similar to what we've been doing. Um, so the first thing I did uh, before was I said move to point. Um, and so now I say instead of CG context move to point, I say CG path move to point. It does take one additional parameter. 
um, it takes a pointer um, to a transformation matrix. Since we've already got plenty of transformation matrix going on, I just pass it a pointer to identity, um, which works out well because I'm, I'm dealing with the identity as my current transformation as well. So I just pass it in an identity. And you can see that I add, I move to a point, I add a line, um, then I add an arc, and then I close the subpath. One thing I'll mention, by the way, is if you just did these two, if you just added the arc and then you closed it, um, it would work just fine. Um, I just wanted to show you um, move to point um, and add line to point. So it's the skills, um, so I wanted to show you that, but just drawing this and then closing it would have worked fine. Um, so we've added a mouth path. You can also see it's got the word create in it. Um, so just so I don't forget for later, um, down here I'm just going to go ahead and say CG um, path release um, and I'm just going to go ahead and release my mouth path. Um, <clears throat> actually I should probably put that down at the very very bottom because I'm going to need it for this part. So here I've created my mouth path um, and so you'll see that since I commented this out um, then at, at this point nothing got added as my clipping region. So what I need to do is I need to say CG context, um, add path, um, and I'm just going to add my mouth path to the context here, um, and I'm going to use it as the clipping region. Um, and then what I'm going to do down below is I'm going to I'm going to use it as the clip, um, and then I'm going to add it again. Um, and then this time I'm going to use it to um, stroke the outline of the mouth. Um, it seems like this should work, um, but I think there's one slight glitch. Um, it does draw, but it actually, it technically draws it thinner because there's a clip still applied and it drew it a little thinner than it should have. Um, it was good enough, uh, but I'm all picky, right? Um, and I want to show you stuff. Um, and what I want to show you is if you want to take off this clip, um, the way you do it is a little sneaky. Um, you would guess that there would probably be like an unclip, right? Um, there is no unclip. The way that you um, <coughs> remove the clip um, is actually you just save the context before you clip it. So I'm just going to say save the state. So here I'm, I'm just getting ready to start uh, start clipping. So I'm going to save it before um, I clip it. It doesn't matter which side of the path I go in because the, the save doesn't, doesn't save the path. Um, and then if I saved it up there, all I want to do is I just want to pop it off um, before I stroke the mouth. So what that does is you can see that I, I saved it um, and then I made a clip um, and then I popped it back off and that, that removed that clip is what it did. So it removed that clipping region. Um, so at this point you can see the line thickness is a little thicker now. Um, that's because before it was cutting off half of it because of the clipping region. So this, we've finally uh, made something that makes me happy. Um, this I consider an acceptable smile. So it's got this cool fancy gradient. Um, it's got this black outline. Um, and you can see that the reason we actually did all this is I wanted to show you about gradients, uh, which is neat. Um, I also wanted an excuse to show you if you ever want to reuse a path, um, you, should, you should save it into a mutable path first, um, and then that way you can reuse it uh, for later things. So see how easy it was to add this outline since we'd saved this path. Um, so that's the end of what we're going to do in this class with drawing. Um, it was short and sweet. A couple other things I want to say about drawing, just so you know them, is you can also draw images. Um, so you can, of course, use UI image view objects, but you can also draw images directly into you know, your own custom subviews. The ones people use the most are, um, if you have some image, you can draw it in a rect, um, or you can draw it at point. Uh, those can both be very handy. Uh, there are a couple more drawing options. You can do blend mode stuffs and patterns. 
Um, in addition to images, you can also draw strings. Um, this I thought was crazy the first time I saw it. So an NS string um, has methods to draw itself. Yes, it really does. So if you had a string called hello world and you just wanted to draw it, um, you do have to come up with a font. The easiest way to get a font is to use a system font, um, which I think is a uh, veranda or something like that, uh, with, with size 16. Um, and then again, you can say draw in rect uh, with this font um, or draw at point with this font. Likewise, those are the two that you're most likely to use, but there's a bunch more. Um, there's, there's other things you can do as well. Um, so you can actually draw strings without using UI labels. So you can just put them, put them right in there. And these are actually UI kit features. These aren't core graphics. These are UI kit features adding this capability. Um, if you want even more um, about graphics, um, I do highly recommend some of Matt Stroker's videos um, from University of Utah. He's got some really good stuff about sprites. He's got a really good introduction to OpenGL. I recommend you check that out. Uh, also, if you want more free videos in the Apple Essentials, there's a really good introduction to OpenGL. There'll just be no time to cover it um, in a 10-week course. Uh, there's also a book that I found that I really like. Uh, it's called Beginning iPhone Games Development. Even though it's called games, it's really about the graphics that go into this. Um, there's some really good stuff about sprites. Uh, there's some great examples with core animation. Admittedly, we covered most of this in this class. Um, I actually got content from this book. I, I've read through it once. Um, it's also got a lot of advanced stuff with OpenGLES. Uh, particle systems, texture maps, all kinds of things. So that is your crash course um, in terms of core graphics. To be honest, a lot of apps don't do drawing themselves, uh, but it can be a really nice thing to add to your app, especially if your graphics need to be interactive. Um, so you know you need to do things like uh, changing the colors of something. Uh, they're also nice because it uses vector graphics. So if you were to zoom in, uh, the pixel quality would, would always stay just as good. Um, and you can do fancy things like gradients and shading. Cool, so that's all we've got for core graphics. We're going to continue with this example next time, though, uh, when we start talking about gesture recognizers. Uh, that's some pretty cool stuff, too. All right, see you next time.